Uh, well, tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. Uh, well, uh, I have a kind of diverse background. I started uh, with a PhD in quantum physics uh, that gave me a sort of data scientist uh, background. That right. I mean, yeah, it. Uh, helped me in, in a lot of situation in my following uh, industrial expertise. And I moved into the IT industry, uh, at the beginning mainly working in, in semantic application um, related to knowledge management and search, in, and search okay. engines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely interesting and I think that what was really valuable for my experience in IoT is especially related to interoperability because semantic can help a lot in uh, solve interoperability issues in any kind of IoT problem or mm -hmm. platform you want to develop. Uh, then I moved into engineering consultancy and spent a few years in that field uh, managing mainly uh, international innovation projects funded by European Commission or big okay. public institution. Right. And in that area, I have the opportunity to cover many industrial fields from construction, aerospace, and so on. Over the last years, I spent mainly time working on smart cities projects and so on. And where, of course, in this kind of context, IoT is a kind of underlying uh, enabling factor and you can't do anything without IoT and so it was definitely interesting for me to dig up into this into this field and learn more and more. Uh, and then yeah eventually I came uh, to work in Konica Minolta mm -hmm. uh, and here I take care of the technology strategy technology development mainly in for Euro but I recently also started to uh, uh, take care also of other application uh, and product development programs uh, worldwide uh, and of course for an electronic manufacturing company, uh, IoT is a very, very relevant field. And so, yeah, I'm trying to apply all the other <laughs> knowledge that I gained uh, in my previous year in this new exciting uh, context. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, you do have a lot of experience in different verticals. Are there any similarities between the data science that's required in one vertical to the next vertical? Uh, well, to me, the similarities are mainly related to skills that okay. you need more okay. than actually uh, technology or platforms. Uh, to me, there is no uh, one-stop shop solution in the market, even though someone, uh, well, many companies may claim that and they may be right within, let me say, a certain point of view, still there is not really a one-stop shop. So it's really important to have the right people in place, uh, the right skills, mm -hmm. and, and the similarities sometimes are more from the point of view of, of customer case, of use case that you want to apply. And that is what sometimes you can let move uh, a solution developed uh, for an industrial field, for a vertical field, in another vertical. But every time you need someone to uh, approach the problem from scratch mm -hmm. sometime, mm -hmm. and, and you can use your experience and your skills, skills, but always, let me say, keeping in mind that it's going to be very likely totally different from before. Yeah, no, but I think you bring up a good point, and that is of the skill sets. Now, Data scientists in general are pretty hard to come by, right? So yeah. what have you found in your experience, um, the backgrounds? Have you been grooming or you've been training um, uh, people from different backgrounds to become data scientists? Or are you going strictly for those that have been educated 100% in that area? Uh, let's say, when I studied from my side mm -hmm. when I did my PhD that the data scientist didn't exist as a term. Right. So and definitely you didn't take data science. Right? Yeah. So in this sense, uh, I have to say, um, in the previous year you always had to find someone that wasn't actually trained for that, but gained enough experience in, let, in general, numeracy experience related to statistics and, and data analysis, data mm -hmm. management, uh, simulations, and so on. Uh, and all this kind of experience can usually e uh, help you to catch up quite quickly to what are, can, can be the core of the problem and how to solve it. Now, of course, that data science uh, is becoming more and more popular as a field by, by itself. Right. It's a little, I would say, oh, and it it can be a little bit easier to find the right person. Okay, okay. On the other hand, the, the competition on the hiring is yeah. so high that <laughs> sometimes, anyway, you need to find and think a little bit uh, laterally uh, to find the right skills. Now, so, so what other skills then are you looking for? I mean, quantum physics, I mean, obviously there's a lot of mathematics involved there. In general, uh, yeah, uh, graduates from, uh, well, uh, let me say the main uh, skills can be related to computer science, of course, that's okay. kind of straightforward. Yeah. But yeah, usually uh, people trained in physics, uh, mm -hmm. 
theoretical or experimental physics also uh, can be very, very, very um, adapt to the role, as well as, of course, mathematicians and statisticians can really provide uh, an added value to this kind of job. And of course, everyone can bring his or own uh, perspective and way of working and way to approach the problem. That I think also that's the nice thing when you work in data science, that it's mm. still a kind of, a, um, I'm not sure, it's still, in, it's still a, a, a role uh, and a, let me say a kind of job that is it's still a very very early phase. So yeah, there is yeah. not clear. So not so yeah, there are not clear uh, guidelines. There yeah, are not clear. Point. Everyone can interpret the role in a different way and bring something new and uh, new value. No, no, no. That makes a lot of sense. Well, let's talk about starting an IoT pilot project. What what would you consider are the best first steps to take? Uh, I think that uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the customer centric approach is very important. And, and when I say customer for me is, of course, pretty generic. Right. Just could be internal customer, could be, of course, the external customer even more important. But the real value is really to sit down mm -hmm. with all the relevant stakeholders uh, that are going to use or interact with the system. I really try to understand what are their pain points and what is the value that they are looking for. Okay. Uh, usually, it's very, very helpful to play that with a kind of very small proof of concept, uh, just done for them. Not a very, not a generic uh, showcase, but just a very, very simple proof of concept to show. In your case, mm -hmm. we think mm -hmm. that uh, this can be a nice approach. Right. Sometimes they can come back saying, no, 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 you're totally wrong. It's totally different, but it's, a, it's the best way to engage the conversation. And in my personal experience, I found in a lot of situations that just by that, the clients, um, uh, find new ideas. I don't right, say right. they really. They realize it, it, something it new. Ideas, they had no right? idea. Yeah, it triggers. It triggers. Definitely triggers new idea, new ways to approach the problem. Because uh, often, uh, yeah, using I analytics and especially analytics associated to IoT is mm. a totally new field for many. Mm. So they don't really know what is possible. And you really sometimes to hint them and give the right tips to say, okay, this is what is possible, and starting from that. What do you want to do? And that's definitely, uh, I would say, a very, very important first, uh, let me say, step to, to discuss with the client. And then, mm -hmm. of course, uh, the second step is always to look into the data. And that's, of course, where my data scientist <laughs> background, uh, background comes uh, in help. Uh, and you always need to look into the data, and you always need to understand what are the relevant data. And that's very, very important, because especially when you talk about IoT, you have a lot of data, people talk about big data, and they say, okay, I have a lot of data, I have a big pool of data, but you really need to understand that sometimes, in most of the cases, most of these data are not that useful, right. or they're just adding noise. Right. So, uh, as, as you say, extra signal from noise is a very, very difficult job, and you really need to start and approach it from the beginning. Always, again, keeping in mind what are the customer value you want to provide. Yeah, no, that's a good point, and, and it seems like sometimes there's this romantic notion that a uh, data scientist is going to look into this pool, this data, this huge data pool, and extract this this unknown value, like a treasure that's been buried. And it seems, in my experience, that it's been more is something that's planned in advance. Or are you seeing that too? I mean, are you seeing this? Maybe it wasn't planned in the first place, but there's somehow finding some value in the data, or is that? Yeah, of course, coming from the experience, again, that you have in managing data, and knowing what is the final goal, you always need to, yeah, to in interpret this data and, and apply, let me say, the some known techniques mm. to uh, extract the relevant information. But yeah, you're always, that's the point because I say that the customer-oriented uh, approach is very important, because otherwise you need to apply a lot of techniques, a lot of algorithms, and you really don't know where you where you want to go and what you want to get. Uh, there is a nice quote from Richard Feynman. It is uh, a, a Nobel Prize uh, for physics. that said, you should never, never try to solve a problem without knowing the solution. Of course, it's a joke, but actually means that you should know where you want to get before actually starting to do your job. Otherwise, you can easily get lost. No, I think that's, I think that's good advice, and, and I agree with that. Um, let, let, let's move on a little bit further and then uh, just, again, thinking about the audience and they're, and they're approaching IoT uh, data science now. 
Um, as you said, the recommendation is kind of know what you want and then mm -hmm. start looking into the data, put something up quickly because sometimes that's going to generate ideas. But then what do, you, what do you do as the next step? Like what's the process for selecting the right databases, the right products, or is that, is that, is that still a little bit further down? Well, again, trying to yeah, follow up my, uh, let me say, what I previously said. I don't think there is a kind of recipe that is valid in any situation. Okay. Okay. But uh, in general, uh, following up, let's say, the first POC, it's always very important to stick on an iterative approach. So you need to build the solution time by time, trying to uh, target one by one what are the, the supposed uh, important value for the client, mm -hmm. keeping in mind that while the solution is going to evolve with time, uh, also, the idea and interest of the clients are going to evolve as well. So you need <laughs> to be ready point. to shift sometime your direction. <laughs> and that's why um, keep an iterative approach is particularly important. And so the, I think that this is very important. And so you can, that also helps you to grab one by one, uh, let me say, the different, uh, the different targets. And of course, by doing that, mm. you can find the right tools in the market. If you're an expert, you know, with all the right technology, how you're going to, how you're going to approach them and so on. Uh, 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 of course, the mantra should be that you should always try to use as less technology as possible. So if you, sometimes you can indeed find uh, a technology that can be applied to all your use cases, mm -hmm. but it's not always like that. And right. you need to be flexible. It's very, very important to keep a also flexible architecture, uh, for example. And, and recently, let's say some new, let me say, almost new patterns like microservices architecture can help you trying to, I would say, uh, differentiate and, and keep separated the different services that you want to provide, even mm -hmm. though you want to have a kind of loose coup coupling among them. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, let's say, when you've reached somewhat uh, a final point where you know what the client wants, mm -hmm. before scaling up, is definitely important to engage in the discussion if you didn't uh, if it's not has not been already done, you need to involve in the discussion the enterprise architect or the enterprise architecture owners in the company, mm -hmm. as well as the IT managers, because to scale up an infrastructure, it's very very important that this that this well this solution is tightly, uh, let me say, connected with the existing infrastructure. Uh, and sometimes I saw a situation where there were a very, very good solution, but it was, let me say, deployed kind of standalone solution. Right. And then what happened, it was, it was very, very difficult to scale it up and especially adapt to the other needs of the, of the, mm. um, of the, uh, of the company. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, even though at the beginning is can have a very, very, very great potential. Then on the, even on the medium term, you find out that it's very difficult to scale it up and you have to throw it away. And it's a pity, not only because mm. you've spent mm. a lot of money on that, but especially because there, is poten there were potential, there is potential, and you have also wasted this potential. Yeah, and, and I think what you're saying is consider the scale issue. Now, does that, that brings me to platforms. Is it, do you recommend using existing platforms, which, which can theoretically scale, or is this something that's being done custom for the POC um, or the, in, the initial, you know, the early proof of concept? Well, uh, it really depends by the situation. In, I would say 95% of the cases, even more, mm. there are existing platforms that can scale, it, yeah. can scale up quite consistently, yeah. especially with the res recent evolution related to big data, MapReduce um, file system, and so on. I think this is this definitely, yeah. there is stuff there where you can scale up. It's more a matter to, integrated properly inside the IT strategy of the company. Yeah. That's the that's real value. And yeah, time to time, you have maybe something very, very challenging. And in that case, yeah, you have to come up with something new. But I think is the nice side of innovation when you really have sure. to invent something and then make a new step, let's say, into the technology state of the art. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. Where can people find uh, more about you and your company? Well, uh, first of all, I suggest everyone to read our uh, white paper that okay. is called Genius of Things that tried to the yeah, Genius of Things, genius of things like yeah, yeah, and it's definitely interesting because it tried to explain how we are trying to approach this in a different way and uh, from our perspective uh, how the IoT and 
let me say, data analytics mm -hmm. uh, and big data can be merged together. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can find this white paper in our website. It is bic.conicaminolta.eu. Okay. Um, as well as, of course, inside, uh, if they want to continue to work with us and engage with us, also we are creating what we call a leading, leading edge partnership program. Mm -hmm. So inside the website, they can find all the information to join our program and enter in our discussion with us and with, let me say, our many partners that we have worldwide. And because the real point is that we don't think that, it, I think it's valid for Conic Minolta and for anyone else, we mm. can't make this journey alone. We need to co-innovate, we need to work together with partners and clients, and we need to create, uh, let me say, shared uh, work, uh, shared mm -hmm. work solution. And mm -hmm. we believe in what we say, the power of many, and that's where I think is the value of the collaboration with us. Oh, well, great, great. Well, I'll put the, the link and the link to the white paper and to your website in the show analysis notes. Thank you very much. Thank you.